In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this box-shaped cake using fondant panel. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you wanna learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. So I am making a box-shaped cake using fondant panels, and every time I make a cake using this technique, people ask me how I do it, and I wanna show it to you. But I cannot take credit for this technique. I learned this from Sharon Zambito. She's my mentor. I love her so much. I've learned so much from her. And I tweaked it to my liking, but I just want to share with you how I do this. This is an intermediate slash advanced cake decorating technique. It does require precision and a lot of tools and everything that I use is going to be listed in the description. So a lot of people ask me where the tools are or where they can buy the tools. I take the time to link everything for you. Sometimes you just have to click the word more or whatever to expand it and then you can see all the items that I used. And stay tuned at the end, stay tuned. <laughs> at the end of the video, I will talk about how I cut the cake and the number of servings and show you a couple different examples. So let's get started. So I decided to film this after I already baked and filled this cake. This is a three layer half sheet cake. It's yellow cake and the filling is cookies and cream filling. I have videos showing you how I make both and I will link that in the description. I want to get a crumb coat around this entire thing first. So I have my big batch of American buttercream. I have a video showing you how I make that. I will link that below as well. And I want to get the icing to go over the top of the cake, then also cover the top. And I'm gonna dip my bench scraper in some hot water, wipe it off and use that hot blade to smooth out the icing. You wanna make sure you hold the blade straight so you have straight sides. And then I'm gonna keep dipping it in there and smoothing it out. And then I'm gonna take my spatula and just press that excess icing down. And it doesn't have to look perfect, that's a crumb coat. Let's put that in the refrigerator for four to five hours so that icing can solidify. And now I'm gonna put on the next coat of icing. So you can use an icing tip and you know a bag with the tip. I've just always done it this way, so I prefer to do it this way. So I like to get an entire coat around the bottom and then I do it around the top. And again, make sure that it goes over the top of the cake and then get some on the top. I have videos where I go into full detail on how I ice smooth buttercream cakes. It's a round cake, not a, a sheet cake like this, but I will link that in the description. And again, dipping my bench scraper in the hot water, wiping it off so it's dry, and using the hot metal to smooth this out. Now this is gonna be covered in fondant panels, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm just pressing back that excess icing, trying to keep my spatula straight so I have a nice even top. And that looks good. Let's put that back in the fridge for another four hours or so so the icing can solidify. I did it overnight, so this is the next day. Now I need to measure how, how big I need to make these fondant panels. So I just have my ruler and I'm making some mental notes. Now I want to roll these out and cut these bigger than they have to be. So then they're gonna dry and I'm gonna cut them to size. This is gonna make sense as I explain it. <laughs> so I'm writing down how big that top piece has to be, 17.5 by 14 inches. And then I have to make four side panels as well. And I'm making this, this is about four and a half inches tall, but I'm gonna cut it about five inches high. So here's all the measurements of all the pieces that I have to cut. 17 and a half by five, seven, uh, 14 by five and a half. You know, I, I just wrote them all down so I didn't forget. Now, I made a ton of orange fondant. I have video showing you how I make marshmallow fondant. I will link that in the description. And I want to put this in the microwave to soften it up. And all of this fondant has this gum text powder in it and, or Tyler's powder, CMC powder. It's the same thing. It's gonna help your fondant set hard and it's going to hold its shape. This must be in the fondant. I will link that in the description. Did I already say that? <laughs> so now I got that out of the microwave and I am just kneading this together. And look at it, it's peeling, it's like not holding its shape, it's not a good consistency. So I'm getting a little bit of that gum text powder 
on that fondant and I'm going to knead it together and you can't use it right away. You have to let it sit before you start using it and let the powder do its magic. So just set that aside. And then about 20 minutes later, I grabbed it again and I started kneading it and look how smooth that fondant is. It's so much better once you use this stuff. I'm telling you, I love that stuff. <laughs> so I'm getting down some cornstarch and I want to roll out the 17.5 by 14, whatever it was. <laughs> so I need to make sure that this is big enough. I'm rolling that out and you see how thick that I'm rolling it out about an eighth, eighth of an inch thick. Use my fondant smoother to smooth it out and make it nice and pretty and make sure that it's big enough. So I'm going to cut a straight edge and then I'm going to line up my ruler with one end and then cut the other side. So I'm cutting this bigger than it needs to be so it doesn't have to be perfect to start. And that looks good. So I have this big cookie sheet and a cake box lid. I cut the lids off of boxes and I always save them for stuff like that. And I'm sliding on the lid, then slide it on the cookie sheet and let's set that aside. Now I'm gonna make the panels. So I need to make four panels, same thing. Now I need to make a 17 and a half, I'm gonna do 14 by five and a half, but I need to make two of them. So it needs to be five and a half times two is 11 inches tall. So I need 14, by 11 inches tall to get two panels of that of the same size. This will make sense. So let's roll it out again. And that's plenty big. So I'm using my fondant smoother again. I'm gonna cut a straight edge down the side and make sure, look, I'm making that mark at the 14 inches because that's to be 14 inches long. And then I am going to measure the 11. So I'm starting at five and a half. They have to be five and a half inches tall. And then I'm going to 11. So five and a half times two is 11. So make two marks again. I'm just making a dotted line that I can cut the pieces out. So I'm just connecting the dots as I cut them out. And there we go, I have two panels, the size that I need for the smaller sides of the box. And I'm gonna get both of those on another cake box lid. And they get a little uh, distorted when I move them. So I'm gonna take my rulers, my fine and smoother and smooth it out and my rulers and straighten it out. And then I'm going to set that aside. And let's make the bigger ones as well. So 17 and a half inches by five and a half inches, but I need two of them. So I need to roll this out 17 and a half by 11 inches. I'm doing the same thing, cut the straight edges and then make sure it's wide enough. So I'm gonna cut that around 18 inches long and then make the mark at five and a half and 11 and do it down here. So I'm gonna connect the dots. And now I have two panels of the same size, put on a cake box lid, smooth it with the fondant smoother, straighten it with the rulers, and make sure it's the right size. <laughs> and I'm gonna set that aside. Now I need to make the, the lid panels as well. So I need two that are 17 and a half by two inches tall, and two that are 14 by two inches tall. And I'm just gonna cut a bunch of strips that are two inches tall and I'll cut them to size later. So again, just trimming them, making sure they're long enough. I have this ribbon cutter and I love that ribbon cutter. I'll link it below when I'm cutting four strips and lining them on that cake box lid and straightening them with the rulers. And that looks good. Let's set those aside. And here's the table where I have them all sitting to dry. Now I want to measure how big I need to make the panels. We're starting with the side panels first. I want to line that ruler up with where it's going to touch the side of the cake and then see how long it needs to be. So if I have another panel touching here, it's going to come to about 16. What is that? Like 16 and a quarter inch. So that's how long I'm going to cut the panel and I am making sure that I'm going to cut the panels the same height and making sure that the cake is the correct height. That's why I wanted to make sure it was iced evenly and all of the panels will be four and three quarter inches tall. So I have this L square and it's necessary to use this so everything is straight and perfect angles. So I'm just cutting straight edges first. So I'm lining that up and I'm using that first corner. And I'm just cutting the sides off so I can have straight edges to measure from. This will make sense as I go on. And you want to make sure that that ruler does not move <laughs> as you're cutting. And then it's not long enough, so I have to slide it down, make sure it's lined up perfectly, and then continue the cut. And I'm using a sharp X-Acto blade as well. It needs to be sharp when you're doing this. 
And there, now I have two straight edges and now I can do my measurements. So I'm gonna line that ruler up with the side and then I'm again, make sure the ruler is straight and I'm making my marks and I'm sorry, I'm a little out of frame. You'll see what I'm doing. I'm cutting the length and measuring the length and then the height. So again, it had to be four and three quarter inches tall. So I'm just, you know, connecting the dots like I did earlier, sliding it down, making sure that it's four and three quarter inches tall. Now, line that ruler up with the side and then line the ruler like to connect the dots and make sure you are cutting straight edges. It's very important to do that. Good. And now I'm going to turn it, line the ruler on the left up with the straight side. And then the top part, I'm connecting the dots that I made. And then at the end where it wasn't, it wasn't long enough just slide it down, make sure it's lined up correctly. And when I cut the corners, I like to just press the knife down to the countertop like that. I don't want to drag it. That way I don't mess up the corners of the panel. And let's hold that up to the cake. And that looks pretty good. And now I want to stick this to the cake. So I'm using a little bit of American buttercream and spreading that on the side and then stick this down. Use a fondant smoother to really press it against the cake. Now I want to do the next one. So it has to be four and three quarter inches tall. I'm lining the ruler up with the very edge of that. We're starting at the back of the cake. Now we're coming up the sides. And then that other panel, I'm using the fondant smoother to mock like it was the panel just to see where it was going to come to. And it looks like each side needs to be 12 and a half inches tall. So you see if there's another panel on there, it was going to meet at 12 and a half inches. I hope this isn't confusing. <laughs> so again, you have to start by cutting your two uh, straight edges good and now I'm lining it up with the end and marking 12 and a half so I get my dotted line turn it and then I need four and three quarters high and I'm marking my dotted line the whole way down line up that long part with the straight edge and then connect the dots with the shorter one cut that and then turn it and then, oh, I'm showing you the consistency. Do you see how thick it is and it's holding its shape? Um, that's a, it, it was drying for a couple days, so it's holding its shape. And then again, I'm just connecting the dots here, making sure that my lines are straight. And that looks good. Let's hold it up and make sure it matches perfectly. And that looks good. Now it's sticking out a little too far. So I'm putting a little more icing on here, <laughs> uh, a little thicker layer of icing. And then I'm getting a little bit of water down the side of that back panel and on the side of that side panel where it's going to meet. So the water can uh, basically glue together. And I'm really pressing it against that icing to make sure it's stuck against the side of the cake and trying to push that seam together using the, the handle of that paintbrush to just push that out a little bit just so it can meet perfectly. And then I did the same thing. So it's the same measurements for the other side panel and I cut it and measured it just like I did the other one and press that together. So the seam matches. Good. And use my fondant smoother to really press that against the cake. Now I need to measure the front panel. So I'm sticking it all the way over to the left. It needs to be 16 and what was that like three eighths inches long and I'm doing the same thing cut your straight edges first Then use my ruler to measure my my little dotted lines for the width and the height And again, it's four and three quarter inches tall And then cutting my straight edges by lining up the one side with the straight edge and then connecting the dots on the other side And let's hold this up, make sure it fits, and that fits pretty good. So again, I wanna get some icing down and get some water on the edges where it's going to meet and push that onto the cake. And make sure you push the seams together. And I'm just making sure that they meet up perfectly. And just press my fondant smoother, making sure that's adhered to the cake. Now I need to measure the top piece. So I want to make sure that it's the, the same width and length the entire way up and down the cake. 
Now right here, it was in, coming in a little too far. So I'm just using my handle to pull it out just a little bit. So that way it's the same width the entire way down. So it's like what, 12 and three quarters. And then I'm lining up with that one side. And then it comes to what, 16 and a quarter, making sure it's the same the whole way. And I'm doing the same exact thing for that big uh, top piece. So I'm cutting the straight edges. I need two straight edges. Good. Now I have my two straight edges and I'm going to line the left side of the ruler up with one straight edge and make my dotted line for the width and turn it and then line the ruler up with the other side and make the dotted line for the length and line up the ruler with the straight edge and then use the long side to connect the dots and cut your straight line and then do the same thing for the other side. Now I'm getting a little bit of piping gel down where it's gonna to touch because I'm only using piping gel on that top part. I'm not putting anything underneath the lid. I'm not gonna be able to. It's gonna be a little too difficult. Before I put that top piece on, I want to fill in any voids with some buttercream. So you don't want the corners to sink. So I'm making sure that I have enough buttercream on the corners and that the icing is coming to the top of those panels and it's not gonna sink when you put this down. So let's gently lay that on top and then you have to get it in position. So just sliding it into position and then using my fingers to make sure that the seams match. And that panel is coming in a little too much. So I'm carefully peeling it out and trying to pull it out a little bit. So it's more straight because it was just bending in a little too much. That's me being a little crazy. <laughs> now I need to measure the, the lid pieces. So the first one has to be 16 and three quarters wide. So I'm cutting a straight edge on this lid piece and then marking my line at 16 and three quarters. And oh my gosh, I cut it too short. I am an idiot. <laughs> I want to make sure you don't do this. Always measure twice and cut once. So uh, I'll show you how I fix this, oh well. So let me get a little bit of orange candy melts. I just got some candy melts, stuck them in the microwave, melted them for a minute, and then spread that on the back. Candy melts are gonna hold this on here the best because the chocolate sets and then that thing ain't going nowhere. So make sure it's lined up to the top and on the side. And then here's that extra little piece that I have to cut because I'm a moron and I cut it too small. <laughs> so always measure twice, cut once, it's just, a rule that I always follow except for that one time <laughs> where I just messed it up. Get a little bit of orange chocolate on the back and press that on. There we go. We'll never, we'll never be able to tell. Luckily that was the back of the cake. So this panel has to be 12 and three quarters. So again, look, I'm measuring twice. Okay, I got it. <laughs> so I'm making sure I, I mark my dotted line 12 and three quarters. So I cut that straight edge first and then I'm doing my straight edge on this side. And let's hold it up and make sure that it is the correct size. And yes, it is. So I'm getting a little bit of water at the seam. And I got some chocolate on the back and I'm pressing it down. And you gotta hold it for a couple seconds until the chocolate sets. You wanna make sure that it's lined up to that back panel, that it's lined up to the top. Like you want it lined up everywhere perfectly. And just press it with my fondant smoother. And again, I did the same thing for the other side panel. That's the same size. I got some chocolate on the back and I'm making sure it's lined up with the top of the box and the back of that panel. Now I'm taking my ruler to measure how wide that front piece should be, making a note and doing the same thing, connecting my dots. And then I'm gonna use the L square to cut it straight, hold it up, make sure it fits, and it does. And I got some chocolate behind the back and I'm gonna press that against the cake and make sure that it is meeting the top edge and the side pieces as well. Use my fondant smoother to really press that down. And that looks good, I'm gonna put that in the fridge. And then a couple hours later I took it out. I have a piping, uh, a, an icing bag, why is that so hard to say, with like a tip two with that orange icing that is the same color as the fondant and I am just filling in the cracks so everything looks seamless. So this can get a little tricky. You need to make sure that you dye your icing the same color as the fondant and icing tends to dry a little darker so it might be a little light to start but it'll dry a little deeper. I have a, a paintbrush and a wet paper towel and I just keep wiping that paintbrush on there. I smoothed it with a palette knife. I'm, anything I could do to smooth out that icing just to make it look seamless. 
And there is the panel method to make your box cake. So there you go. There is the fondant panel technique to get the nice, sharp, perfect edges and make your cake look like a box. So I want you to think outside, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> I want you to think outside of the box, pun intended, <laughs> when using this technique. So it doesn't just have to be like a shoe box with a lid like I did in this one. I'm gonna show you a couple other examples. I did this Fortnite cake. The top tier is one of those, I, I don't know what it is. It's a blue box, <laughs> but it's from the game. But it's more of like a cube rather than like a rectangular shoe box. But I did the same thing with the four panels and the top and you know it, it required a little more decoration but it's the same basic technique and then this hip hop cake which is one of my most popular designs that bottom tier the turntable that is the same procedure to make this although the decorations are different you see I mean it's, that takes a while to decorate <laughs> but it's the same thing with the fondant panels on the side and on the top it just doesn't have that little lip for the lid and on this one, I did it on the top tier for a shopping bag. So I built the cake tall and narrow and then built the panels around that. And then I also did it for this pizza box as well. So whenever I need to do a square or a rectangle cake, I usually do this fondant panel method because I hate icing cakes square cakes in buttercream. It takes forever. Now this takes forever too, but I guess, I don't know, pick your poison. <laughs> and I just prefer to do it this way. Now, how do you cut these cakes? When I delivered this cake the other day, I did tell the people at the venue what to do. So I told her that you're gonna wanna remove all the panels and then cut the cake underneath because that fondant dries pretty hard. And I, I just feel like it's easier if you disassemble it and then cut the cake. Now that bottom tier was pretty big. It was like I said in the beginning, it's a three layer half sheet cake. And so I just baked it in the half sheet pan three times and then filled it in between and stacked it. Obviously I have videos showing you how I fill cakes and I will link that in the description. But that cake, just that bottom tier feeds about 60 people or so. But just doing that bottom tier to make the panel, so rolling everything out and cutting it and letting it dry, that was probably like an hour and a half. And then to cut them down to size and assemble them onto the cake was another hour and a half. Now that was a really big cake, that's why it was taking so long, but it is time consuming. And then to fill in the gaps and everything was like another 20 minutes. So just doing the box panels on that bottom tier was about three and a half hours. So make sure if you're doing this technique that you take that into consideration when you're pricing the cake. So I'm going to show you the final product. <laughs> Here is the cake that I made and it was so big and heavy that I couldn't even take it outside and get my normal picture with it because I was afraid of dropping it. So this is the backdrop that I had. Um, it is that, that bottom tier and then it's nine seven and five inch tiers on top. Total the cake feeds like 110 people or so. Now I am sorry, <laughs> whenever I post pictures of cakes, people are like, how did you do that? How did you do that? I did not film this one. This one took forever. It took like 13 hours just to decorate it. However, I do have videos showing you how I do the paint splatter that's on the top and the third tier. I have videos showing you how I make fondant names. And those tennis balls that I made, I have a video showing you how I make a baseball and it's very similar except the lines are a little different. But to get that texture on the tennis ball, I just had gloved hands and I got some buttercream on my hands and I just rolled it on the ball. Super simple way to get a nice texture on those tennis balls. And real quick, let me just tell you, I <laughs> delivering this cake, I almost quit cake decorating. And I'm trying to say my mantra that I say at the end of every video, it's cake, have fun. It's cake, have fun. I'm trying to remind myself. So I went to deliver this cake and there was no cart. So luckily I lift, <laughs> but I don't lift enough to hold a stinking hundred pound cake for 10 minutes while I'm waiting for the freight elevator. Oh my gosh. So I'm holding it waiting for the elevator, the elevator's not coming. I need to rest. I need to put it up against a wall just so I can like rest a little bit. I stepped to the side. There was a step that I didn't see. I fell down the steps. I had the cake, the back of the cake uh, jammed into a door and it messed up the back corner. Thank God I didn't drop that thing. 
Oh my gosh. You ever have those deliveries where they are just a nightmare and you're so happy to get rid of the cake? <laughs> that was this one. However, I did receive a text from them telling me that they loved it and everything was great. So thank God I did not drop that stinking cake. So I think that's it. That's enough of me rambling. What new techniques did you learn in this video? I would love to know. Leave them in the comments below. Please like this video if you liked it. And if you are enjoying my tutorials, I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee. My link is pinned in the comments below. Please keep in touch on socials and check out my website. Everything is listed in the description. And if you want to stick around, you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake, have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.